In this video, I'll show you how to make beautiful pictures out of particles, and use them for things like twinkly Christmas lights, enormous smoothly moving doors, and summoning the devil himself. The basic idea is to use a program to generate colored dust particles so they all add up to make a picture. A bunch of people have made generators for these commands, and so in preparing for this video, I looked at as many as I could in search of the best one. My favorite by far is Particle Converter, made by Chemo. It has a very slick interface and the ability to configure practically anything you'd want. There is really no downside here, so this is the one I'm going to use for this tutorial. The first thing you're going to want to do is go down to the description and download it. Once you're here, click on the file labeled Particle Converter plus Runtime. Download it and extract it wherever you want. Now, you should be able to run particleconverter.exe. Note, it might tell you that you have to install .NET Core 3.1. That's just Microsoft software that C Sharp runs on, so go ahead and install it, then everything should work fine. Once you've got it open, you'll be greeted with this nice user interface. By the way, while you can't full screen this window, you can resize it. The first thing to do is load up the image you want to turn into particles. Currently, it only supports PNG and JPEG files. The first thing I'll show you how to make is the big doors. I'm gonna load the vanilla spruce door texture, which I stitched together in MS Paint so that I have one 16 by 32 image. Once it's loaded, you'll get a small lag spike and then your file name will appear here. If you wanna see an approximation of what it will look like, you can check this box labeled Preview. For almost everything you do, you're gonna want the coordinate mode set to relative local instead of relative world. This will make your particle commands run in the direction you're facing, instead of always facing the same way. In technical terms, it will use carrots instead of tildes for the coordinates. The next thing we'll want to change is the alignment. By default, the particles will appear below and to the right of where you spawn them. This is usually not ideal. We're going to be using invisible armor stands to keep track of our doors, and those armor stands are going to be on the ground. Because of this, I'm going to set the vertical alignment to bottom, so that armor stands are at the bottom of the door. Next, we can choose our particle size and density. I recommend a size of 0.75 for most things. Any smaller and particles will sometimes disappear before they get replaced, which can make your image look like it has gaps in it. Also, for some reason the developer limited the particle size to 1 when the actual maximum size is 5. There is a way around this though, I put the explanation on screen so you can pause and read it now if you want some nice big particles. Anyway, the density controls how densely packed our particles are. A value of 8 means each block will be 8 particles tall and 8 particles wide. This can also be controlled by unchecking auto size and manually setting the size of the image. The default density of 8 will give me an output that is 2 by 4 blocks, which is actually perfect. Now there is one more thing that I changed about my door, which is the resolution. Uncheck auto to change it manually. I set my height to 48 just to beef up the number of particles a little bit. Just be aware that changing the resolution like this can stretch out your image a little bit. When you click EXPORT, that's two exclamation marks, it'll save to a folder called Functions in the same directory as the program itself. You can change the place that it exports to with this little file button. Great, there's our function. We can open it up and see that it has in fact created 512 particle commands. Now that we've got your file, you can put it into your data pack. If you don't have a data pack, you can download a completely blank one in the description. Check out my data pack tutorial after this video if you get confused. It's got great reviews. Put the generated function into the functions folder in your data pack and you are ready to go. Okay, slash reload and when I do slash function, my image function is there. Now I can run it wherever I like. In this example, I've got it running at the location of two armor stands. When I want to open the door, all I have to do is rotate the armor stands. I've got two rather long execute commands here to summon them exactly where I want them. This part just aligns them on the X, Y, and Z axis, then I summon them 0.05 blocks over to compensate for the width of the particles and prevent having a tiny gap in the middle. They're summoned with a tag, door 1 for the first door and door 2 for the second door. Then they're made invisible with a simple invisible colon 1. The other command is the same except the armor stand has been rotated 180 degrees so the door faces the other way. Setting this stuff up seems complicated but you can get it all done within a few minutes of trial and error. To open and close the doors I have an extremely basic setup. Door 1 rotates 3 degrees every tick, door 2 rotates minus 3 degrees. Since a wooden button gets pressed for 30 ticks this will rotate the door 90 degrees each time I press a button. To close it I've got the same commands, but with the numbers reversed. 
The Christmas lights were very simple to make, but I think they actually look kind of awesome. I started by finding a royalty-free stock image of some lights, and cropping it down real nice. Once I loaded in the image, it warned me that it would create 67,000 particles. Minecraft won't even render more than about 1600 at once, so that wasn't gonna work. To fix this, I had to change the resolution manually. I wanted there to be 16 pixels per block, and have it be 5 blocks wide to go with my build, so 16 times 5 gave me a width of 80. That is looking much better. Now I could just uncheck auto size and set the width to 5 blocks, and the height automatically adjusts to match. The last thing I changed was setting the vertical alignment to top, so that it would hang at the top of the block, instead of some random middle section. Now I could export, move my function, and go in game. To spawn the particles, I have two invisible armor stands tagged as lights. Then I just execute at at e tag equals lights, run function lights, and it works beautifully. Next I'm going to show you how I made the coolest one, these insane looking alchemy circles. By the way, make sure to subscribe if you're enjoying this video and want to see more like it. Like it. Like. The. Video? Make sure to like the video. This is quite a popular effect, and for good reason. I'm sure ideas are jumping into your head about adventure maps, data packs, and AFK particles for servers. <laughs> I just so happen to know about the perfect tool to create this effect. Chaco Davide's Alchemy Circle Generator is a website that does what it says on the tin. It generates a whole bunch of alchemy circles. The link to the page is in the description. You can go here and refresh the page as many times as you want. When you see a circle you like, you can click on it and save the image. These images are 128 by 128, which is pretty much the perfect size already. For me, I found three of them with relatively little going on in each. This is good because they're gonna overlap a bit and you don't want it to look too crazy. I imported my first image and changed the coordinate axis to ZX so it would lie flat on the ground. I also made sure to change the coordinate mode to relative local, but you should pretty much always do that. Then I set both the vertical and horizontal alignment to center and set the particle size to 0.75. This one will be my middle ring of three, and I found a density of 10 worked well for me. Next, I scrolled down to the bottom and went under more settings. All of this is fine, except that I want to turn on color fixing. This will make all your particles the same color, rather than the color of the original image. That's all for this ring, you can now export it. My other two rings were exactly the same, except for the smaller ring, I set the density to 16, and for the bigger ring, I set the density to 8, and the particle size to 1. Now, back in game, my functions imported, data back reloaded, I can spawn in my invisible armor stands. Get the coordinate of your center block, and create three command blocks. In each one, put in the same command, but change the tag of the armor stand. I use the tags C1, C2, and C3. The C stands for circle. Now I set up three execute commands, one for each of my circle functions. The first function runs at the first armor stand, the second runs at the second, the third runs at the third. If you're not sure how to do this, you can pause the video and read my commands. They're not too complicated. Then I create three more commands to rotate each armor stand at a slightly different speed. I have them spinning slower the further they are from the center, and the middle ring is spinning in the opposite direction, since I think that makes it look more like a satanic ritual and less like a vortex. Let me leave you with some useful videos to watch after this one. Also. Make sure to like and subscribe since you did just watch this entire video. Here's that data pack tutorial I was talking about. It takes you through all the steps to set one up completely from scratch, so you don't have to rely on anyone else's blank template. Wink. If you want to make full use of these particles, you're gonna need to be proficient at slash execute. Check out my slash execute basics tutorial here! Thanks for watching!